Thank you. Thank you very much. And first of all, let me express my sincere gratitude to my dear friend and brother, Dr. Benchi Sabu, for giving me this opportunity. And he has given me a very special task this time. And uh, that is something very similar to conducting a workshop. And uh, this is with respect to uh, discussing on how to initiate, how to start an advanced hybrid closed-loop system in children with diabetes. Of course, this discussion is with respect to 70 g in India and how to initiate them children with type 1 diabetes. So these are my disclosures. To begin with, let me share our own personal experiences. And uh, this is a child, a seven-year-old on 780G. And look at the amazing advances in technology. The device itself is capable of bonusing. And this is at 4 a.m. when the child is sleeping, it is auto bonusing, micro doses of insulin. And in many patients, I would say most of the subjects whom we have started and stabilized on this automated insulin delivery device, the TIR is close to 100%. And this is certainly a dream come true for all those parents and for we physicians. And I would say the long wait is over. And this is the same child. And if you look at how the basils and boluses are delivered, that is also quite amazing. There are areas in between where the basal insulin delivery is almost shut down. And this is almost mimicking that of a normal physiological insulin delivery. And another adolescent, and this was the experience that he shared. And these are all concerning patients for presentations. And he has admitted that I have slept peacefully at night for eight hours after a long gap of 16 years. 16 years. Ever since the diagnosis of type 1 diabetes, this is the first time I am experiencing a peaceful sleep thanks to 780G. But the moment we share the experience or initiate a conversation with the doctor or with the patient, the first question is, the cost is very high. It is unaffordable. But look at the cost effectiveness of these devices. The Minimat 780G in this Swedish study it is associated with an incremental gain of 1.95 quality adjusted life years compared to the conventional management of diabetes with multiple daily injections or in this study they have even compared with the ordinary standalone insulin pumps either with SMBG or with flash glucose monitoring. So this is definitely superior and the cost is offset. The, uh, due to the avoidance of all those complications and lost workplace productivity. And this is the fact. Uh, if you are with your patients one month or two months after initiating 780G, all of them and including the parents will have the same response. We have multiple devices in the global market. And uh, this is a comparison very recently published between the one which is available in India and Tandem Control IQ, uh, which is another very popular insulin pump. Both of them using the advanced hybrid closed loop algorithms. And both of them superior with respect to improvement in the timing range. But some of these studies have shown that one device is more effective in managing hyperglycemia, whereas the other device is more effective in preventing hyperglycemia. Eventually, it's all improving the percentage time in range. The HCL in India comes with a glucose meter for calibrating the sensors and with care link connectivity and all those instructions. But remember, even though the patients are having a previous experience using 
other delivery devices, including insulin pumps and CGM, all of them should be initiating 780G in the manual mode. And it requires two days, 48 hours of insulin delivery data to be analyzed before the auto mode is switched on. The auto mode is termed smart guard feature. And this is how you, you can differentiate between a manual mode and an auto mode. The moment it is in auto mode, all these curves starts appearing. All those patterns and the shield starts appearing. The smart guard feature regulates basal insulin once in every five minutes. And what is the objective? The ulterior objective is to maximize the area at least 85% time to be spent in smart guard, but it uses insulin carb ratio, which is programmed by you, the physician, or by your registered dietitian. And this is a real world experience before we start with onboarding, a real world experience from all over the world. We can see that it is close to 75 to 76% time in range that is exceeding the international recommendation. And this is again irrespective of the age. Even in those below the age of 15 years, you are successful in reaching a TAR of above 70%, which is still exceeding or meeting the recommendations from the international panel. And early intervention. And that is a key to success. And that is where the correction bonuses will have a pivotal role before the onset of a clinically meaningful hyperglycemia. So the minimum 780G will deliver micro auto bonuses quite early and that too automatically to reduce the risk of high and low. Because whenever there is a high which is beyond our expectations, then you may have to have another insulin shot and then recovery curves and so on. <clears throat> So this is prevented by yearly intervention thanks to the algorithm. So for manual mode and for the manual mode settings, you have the three smart card targets, 100, which is a default, and then you have 100, and then you have 120. When the system is in temporary target, so you can also set a temporary target, for example, when the subject is exercising, then the auto bonusing won't be functional. So the manual mode basal rates or the maximum basal settings that you have programmed will not affect the auto basal delivery. The auto basal delivery is completely dependent on AI and the algorithm. So this is how the dynamics is actually helping you prevent both hyper and hypo. So you have the CGM data in the top panel and you have the insulin dynamics in the bottom panel. So follow this cursor. So when the glucose is getting low, the insulin delivery, the basal is automatically adjusting once in every five minutes and the insulin delivery is also lowered in response to the glucose levels. And before reaching a threshold low, and that is suspend before low, predictive PLGS, predictive low glucose suspend. You can see that the basal insulin delivery is completely stopped over a period of time until it again shoot up. So when it's going high, we can see the basal delivery is also subsequently proportionally increased by the algorithm. So moving on to the pump settings. <clears throat> You have to have both basal and bolus. And the percentage which is spent as basal and bolus depends on the age of the person. In adults, it is 50% of the total daily dose of insulin, which is basal, whereas in the pre puberty in children, in small kids, you can have 20 to 40% as basal, and the rest of the total daily dose of insulin as bolus dose. <clears throat> 780G makes use of a proportional integral derivative. So we have multiple algorithms available in the market and the DIY users are using the open source algorithms. And for the 780G, 
the AHCL algorithm is proportional integral derivative. <coughs> and remember, there is artificial intelligence integrated into the algorithm, but there is no machine learning or deep learning. But the algorithm keeps on learning. So every day it keeps on improving. The auto correction is delivered based on the sensor glucose levels and algorithm, and that you once in every five minutes. And by default, the auto correction is always on. And the active insulin impacts auto corrections. <clears throat> so the active insulin is counted. So auto correction biases will count towards the active insulin totals. So the active insulin is the insulin which is left over from previously delivered bolus insulin. So this is a smart guard feature, the auto basal and the auto correction bonus delivery. So you can follow these arrows and in the pink, you can see the basal delivery. And then in blue bars, you have the auto bonus. And I have shown this in the beginning in a real world scenario, how it is auto bonusing when already it has reached the maximum basal delivery. And at the touch of a button that is in the down arrow, you can bonus. But in 780G, you are not calculating the bonus dose of insulin. You are actually entering the carbs. And depending on the carb, it is delivering the bonus. So the patient should be taught, the parent should be taught on carb counting. The smart features uses only the insulin carb ratio and the active insulin time settings. And this need to be programmed and taught by you. So these are the ones which are provided by the clinician, the insulin carb ratio, the active insulin time, and the different targets, whether it is to be 100, 110, or 120. And the algorithm in the pump, the PID algorithm is going to decide on the basal delivery, the auto bolusing, and also the insulin sensitivity factor. So now moving on to how we are going to onboard. So this is definitely going to be an insulin pump workshop in future, but I will give you a couple of tips in this lecture. So as usual, reduce the total daily dose of insulin by 15 to 25%. And if half the dose is more than 0.4 units per kilogram, you may use the weight based dose. So in pediatrics, the weight in kilogram multiplied by 0.2 and in adolescents it is weight in kilogram multiplied by 0.4 and this is the insulin carb ratio 450 divided by the total daily dose of insulin the isf is calculated by the pump itself 1 800 divided by the total daily dose of insulin which can also change every day and the active insulin time can be set somewhere between two or even uh, four or even more hours. And the person with diabetes and the parents should be taught on the change of infusion sets, how to set a temporary target, how to count the carbohydrates, the multiple issues for troubleshooting, and they should be taught on calibrating, when to calibrate the sensor two or three times daily, and also should get familiarized with the blue shield when it is in auto mode and also the green circle for assessing the TAR almost every daily or even multiple times daily. But always remember the fact that the pump requires at least 48 hours of insulin delivery data before the auto mode is automatically switched on. And this timing begins at midnight. So again, at the click of this right arrow, it will take you to the TAR and you can give one more click and then it will provide you with more in-depth information on TAR, TBR and the TAR. <clears throat> and this is a caring data which can be shared and in the physician's office also, you will get all the data from all your patients using either the 780G or the earlier insulin pumps or the Guardian Connect CGM systems. And this is again a tool for motivation and improving. 
the bar the agp report providing you with the information on the ambulatory glucose profile and also the percentage time which is in range and all the other metrics related to the agp report and you should be capable of troubleshooting and you should be training retraining your patients along with the 24/7 support if in case for example if the tar is low check the bolus insulin the insulin carb ratio are they counting the carb rightly if the tar tbr or above range is high or the below range is high or the sensor use is less than 80% so there are many reasons for failure of these systems and here training makes a difference and identifying the right candidate also makes the difference adjusting the settings after starting the pump on an auto mode you have to have your patient come back to the hospital once in a week or two after starting the smart guard feature because we have to again reassure and reconfirm the manual settings and if needed the manual settings also need to be changed and this is very important because the pump can be in manual mode in between and make sure that the patient understands the system this is not a fully automated system this is stage 4 of automation and we are waiting for unannounced meals in future but here they have to bolus before a meal they have to enter the car and bolus they have to enter the glucose they have to check with the glucose meter for calibrating the guardian connect sensor in another 3 months time metronic is supposed to launch the guardian 4 sensor in india we are already we are experienced with using the standalone guardian connect 4 which will not require a calibration but until then we need to calibrate the sensor and the patients should also be taught and trained on how to set up connect with carelink how to remotely monitor and how many others in the family or in the care group can also visualize witness the information in real time so let me conclude with this statement what are the ulterior objectives using an advanced hybrid closed loop system to achieve a tar of at least more than 75% which is easily achievable i will say that in almost every person using 780g it is easy to achieve more than 75% but if the person is trained properly and is proactive and if it is retrained then most of the patients are reaching and sustaining between 95 and 100% intact and average time in smart guard the goal is only 85% so remember the next step in automation will be unannounced meals and the algorithms are still undergoing clinical trials and maybe another in another 2 to 3 years time with better ultra fast acting insulins and with better glucose sensors and algorithms we will be soon going to use completely closed loop systems and that too only with insulin since studies have shown that bionic pancreas are using multiple hormones in the same system probably will not make a big difference so we are now happy with insulin only systems and with the newer algorithms and continuous glucose monitoring systems for automation so let me conclude with this statement the success depends on identifying the candidate identifying the family the family is also important to support psychological support for success and you the hospital the physician the support team for training and retraining troubleshooting 24/7 telemedicine support and all these factors are going to decide the ultimate success when using technologies in diabetes but this is certainly a life changing technology so thank you very much my dear friends and once again thanks to dr benshipai and the team of course i am also part of the team for giving me this opportunity